Can you tell us a little, a little bit about uh, GEO and what it is that you do in the organization? We have a lot of, uh, obviously, formidable competitors in the mapping space. But saying human GEO, I was like uh, perplexed why the name human to the geospatial angle. If we think about land, I mean, land is a key core to prosperity. Thank you, Hugo, for speaking with the GeoBiz and Geospatial World. The first and foremost requirement for any developed country is organizing its land. So any initiatives in organizing its land? Malaysia's vision is to become a developed country by 2020. To be a developed country, there are many issues that need to be addressed, such as uh, the environment. Now, in uh, developing rapidly, especially physical development, naturally, the environment can be degraded if uh, stricter control is not instituted. So it is very important that the control of development, physical development, is necessary in order to maintain the quality of the environment so that the environment is not degraded too much. Even a little degradation means that we have to undertake mitigation measures in order to ensure that the quality remains or at least the quality is taken care of because the quality of the environment is or offers conducive situation for us the uh, general public or the population of the country to live in. How NRE ministry is using GIS or remote sensing technology so that the environment is conserved and taken care of? In Malaysia, it is the problem of inaccessibility. When uh, you have problem of inaccessibility, then monitoring of the environment takes time to do. So when it takes time for you to do monitoring, then uh, the use of geospatial technology is important, mm -hmm. such as GIS, satellite images, and uh, all the other technologies that are available under geospatial in order to uh, institute rehabilitation or putting mitigation measures to ensure that the uh, quality of the environment is maintained or the environment itself is rehabilitated. This is uh, for the benefits of the people. When the quality of the environment uh, later on is instituted, then the people will find that the environment in a certain area is already taken care of. What are the latest initiatives uh, you have instituted uh, uh, so that uh, JUPEM uh, with its uh, national mapping and services is able to contribute in a much more uh, active way to the development of Malaysia? What we do is to upgrade mm -hmm. JUPEM mm -hmm. in terms of it, its functions. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to upgrade JUPEM in terms of its function is we have to provide JUPEM with equipment and uh, other facilities. Without equipment, the necessary facilities, then it would be difficult to upgrade JUPEM. So once JUPEM is upgraded, then uh, the next move is to uh, train the people working in JUPEM. How do you intend to upgrade JUPEM? To upgrade JUPEM, like I said, is to provide the necessary equipment, okay. like drone, mm -hmm. LiDAR equipment, mm -hmm. and so on, mm -hmm. so that uh, 
the production of maps will be much easier for them to do mm -hmm. because Jupiter does mapping mm -hmm. and the maps are needed by uh, different people in different fields. So if this happens, then uh, to expedite the processing of data and also at the end of it is to produce maps to be used by different people is quicker or rapid than uh, <coughs> what Jupiter is doing now. That's why uh, starting from next year, Jupiter mm -hmm. will get allocations from the government mm -hmm. in order to get some of these equipment mm -hmm. that are necessary for uh, Jupiter to function efficiently. And Malaysia is also developing a spatial data infrastructure, MACD, right? So uh, what is the progress of making this uh, spatial data infrastructure a reality? We have data, but our data are not integrated. Yeah. So when the data are not integrated, then data sharing is difficult. We are trying to integrate data that are available and to collect more data and integrate them so that we can manage the data effectively and efficiently. And at the end of it all is to share the data with uh, whatever ministries that want the data or departments that want the data, including the general public. This is very important because data are not easy to come by. And therefore, MACD under my ministry is trying its best to collect data and avail this data to interested parties for their uses. Now, the inability or refusal of other departments to share data is that they always claim that their data are restricted or their data are kept under secrecy. Therefore, if the data are kept under secrecy, then they are not data for public usage. When they are not data for public usage, that is where the difficulty lies. It is therefore necessary for any other departments to determine what data are uh, secret data and what are not. Secret data, they can keep the data by themselves until those data are no longer secret, then they can uh, release those data or give the data to us under one platform. Is Malaysian government uh, formulating some policies uh, to mandate uh, the sharing of data? Policies are important uh, to mandate the sharing of data, but for the time being, there is no proposal in sight to come up with any policy at all to mandate the sharing of data. So uh, it has been, it has to be brought in in a meeting, in ministerial meeting, so that uh, it can be done to mandate the sharing of data. You see, Malaysia is uh, a federation with uh, 13 states and uh, of federal territory. Now, the interests of states are different from the interests of the federal government. Under the constitution of Malaysia, land, forests, and inland waters or rivers are under the jurisdiction of states. It is therefore the state interest also to look into matters like this. So the state, some states, even refuse to share data with us. So uh, this is also our difficulty, especially in times of natural disasters. If states refuse to share data with us, 
So how can we ever protect or how can uh, we mitigate natural disasters? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is very important mm -hmm. that states also must work together with the federal government in order for the federal government to institute changes and mitigation measures to some of those natural disasters that can happen and that will happen, such as big floods. You, you have invited uh, the industry in the morning uh, to come to Malaysia, technology companies, services companies to come and uh, invest in Malaysia to do business in Malaysia. Uh, is Malaysia and uh, the Malaysian federal government willing to do, uh, willing to work in a public-private partnership mode as well? Because any success of the project is uh, uh, dependent uh, on both the parties. So a partnership, an equal partnership, will always ensure uh, a success in a much better way. It is important that they come with high-value technologies mm -hmm. and high-value services that are available for them. Yeah. In fact, they are already in Malaysia. Many of them are already yes. in Malaysia. Yeah. When I went through the exhibition, I spoke to them. Mm. All of them Most of them said they have a partner in Malaysia already. Uh -huh. But of course, <clears throat> as a policy, as one of policy makers and decision makers, then uh, it is always my desire to invite them mm -hmm. so that they come with the latest technology. Mm -hmm. They will bring in the latest technologies with, because they have already partners in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is important that if they come, then they will continue to work with the partners in Malaysia and their partners will uh, work with the government. The partners we talk to, to the government on what they have on and on what they can do. And of course, the government will also look into the cost of the services and technologies that are available that can expedite and enhance decision making within the government. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for sharing your valuable insight with us. Thank you.